Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. When it comes to old-school groove instruments, the discussion often narrows down to a battle between Roland and Yamaha in a Beatles or Stones way. Obviously, this discussion is futile. They are both equally great, there are many other flavors and, like the Noah of gear, most of us will get at least one of each anyway. In last week's MC307 episode, we talked a bit about Roland squeezing every single penny out of tried and tested technologies, and Yamaha is no stranger to this business practice either. They even took this strategy one step further and created a hybrid between a home keyboard for kids, a professional sound module and a dance music workstation, the 1998 DJX. This 90s plastic contraption is based on Yamaha's proprietary AWM engine that can be found in other blue instruments like the CS1X as well. Information on this technology is confusing. At least in the case of the DJX, I can't shake the impression that it's just a rompler with a filter. In spite of the toyish looks, the DJX was not only used by Clam Casino on Wind's Staple Surf, but it also found its way into the backline of one of my favorite acts of all time, the Residence. Let's find out if you should keep an eye open for one of these cute keyboards. At the first glance, the Yamaha DJX is ticking all the boxes built-in speakers, a battery compartment and Chuck E. Cheese design for the kids, general MIDI for aspiring young keyboardists, and 90s dance sounds for techno producers past, present and future. The non-backlit display lets you reach for a torch on stage, but it's big and well structured. For better or worse, the UI is focused on jamming along to the included backing tracks, which are, of course, children of their time. You can select variations, dynamically define key and scale by playing chords in a dedicated section of the keyboard to a degree where it becomes mostly useless for contemporary popular music, re-trigger the pattern and select mute elements of the arrangement on the lower two octaves. The selected instrument can then be tweaked using cutoff, resonance and some hidden parameters assignable to the wildcard knob and ribbon controller. The bass boost affects the master output and reverb, chorus and the multi-fx unit are more on the subtle side. It goes without saying that the entire keyboard range can be used for, well, playing keyboards and you can easily set up layers and splits. There is only one humongous menu that covers more or less everything from voice volume to arpeggiator setup. Speaking of the arpeggiator, it's nice. The Yamaha DJX has a built-in sequencer and it left me wondering if I just don't get it or if it's close to being unusable. I talked to Glynn of Gearfacts who released some more comprehensive videos about the DJX and we agreed on the latter. The built-in sampler is much more entertaining and easy to use, in a Casio SK-1 kind of way. Build quality is plasticky but solid, the keypad is ok, a proper stereo output would have been nice and MIDI implementation is basic but usable. We already had the pleasure to take a look at the DJX2B in one of the first Bad Gear episodes. This DJ-oriented successor and its keyboard sibling are slightly upgraded sound-wise and came with one of the coolest promotion videos ever, but lack many essential features of the original like a velocity-sensitive keyboard, pitch band wheel and a MIDI output that actually works. These second-generation DJXs are easier to find on the used market and prices for the original have risen to real synth territory. I paid 75 euro and the previous owner included these nice stickers you can find on Amazon for 758. Maybe we had the same piano teacher. The Yamaha DJX seems like a powerful toolkit for many applications. Still, there is a widespread consensus that it's nothing but a toy. You have already heard the DJX in our little intro tune. I can live with that. The internal sequencer is a major PITA, so please excuse me for using the almighty Digitact as the sequencer in this first jam.
I wouldn't mind using these sounds in professional music production, and the filter is more than ok. The extensive MIDI implementation of the Digitact comes in handy when using an instrument like the DJX, but you should have the patch list ready at all times to get the most out of the instrument's multi-timbrality. Although there's some basic tweakability of the sounds, you are mostly stuck with the timbre of the keyboard's presets. Let's add some external effects to the equation in this DAW driven jam. effects units might be dusty and dirty, but they certainly work well with a DJX. Multiple outputs would be cool, but that is maybe too much to ask from a megalomaniac home keyboard. Usually I am hesitant to incorporate preset rhythms of instruments like the DJX in my music. They are generic and everybody can use them. However, I have to admit that there are some patterns in this keyboard that I really like, especially when the groove functionality is pushed to the limit. Needless to say that I benchmarked one of the drum loops in this no questions asked hyper energetic 127 velocity piano house filter funk track. The Yamaha DJX is… strange? It looks like a home keyboard and some of the features are far from professional, but the underlying 32 voice synth engine sounds good, build quality is more than decent and it integrates well in many music making environments. Is it the synth of your dreams? Most certainly not, but it can provide run of the mill sounds, lo-fi sampling of drum loops, ready to use retro dance music cliches and a proper set of physical controls. Moreover, dealing with the sequencer might help you to improve your frustration tolerance. It is still hard to say what the guys at Yamaha had in mind when they designed the DJX. Was it intended to be a techno gateway drug for well behaved piano pupils, a trojan horse to get synth sounds into music schools, or the ideal excuse for second summer of love ravers turned parents to have a dance music groove box in their homes? We will probably never know. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.